Why would you possibly want to, to have a war with me? Vanessa, you are a prostitute. I'm not a prostitute. You smoke. I do not smoke. And you're a liar. Come on. What's the meaning of all this? Are you judging me? I'm not judging you. I've not passed a sentence on you. Neither have I condemned you. Okay, so what are you doing? Describing you. What if I had said you're a good girl? Would I have judged you? Or which of these things have I said that you're not guilty of? How is this your concern? It is not my concern. It is the concern of the one who sent me. I came to you with a message of love and hope. And the will of the Father is all my concern. Oh, you are Jehovah Witness, huh? I'm a witness for Jesus. Which one is that? I've never heard of that one. Is that a new church or a new ministry? And are you a pastor or you are a tight pair? We are the church, the bride of Christ. Not a building, nor a ministry. Oh, you are gay? Not in that sense. Aha. Okay, this is getting interesting. In which sense? You see, the things of God are foolishness to the natural man. Your sins have separated you from God, but Jesus loves you. God became man and gave his life for your sins. A kind of love no boyfriend can show you. What do you know about love? And what do you know about the men in my life? Clovis, Pascal, Frank. Hey, wait up. Have you been following me up or what? Do you want a relationship? If you want a relationship with me, just go on and say it. Stop beating around the bush and stop cutting corners. The one that sent me is the one that wants a relationship with you. Repent and turn to God so that your sins can be forgiven and he will give you a new life. So this is where all of this has been headed to. Now listen, I hear this three times a week. And let me tell you, man of God, none of these things you say to food on my table. What do you really know about God? He's there in heaven minding his business. And I'm here facing the reality of my life. And if it takes three men or more, to put food on my table. I will gladly do that with all the joy. God is not who you think he is. He's a God full of mercy and compassion. He cares about your situation. That's why he has been calling you every week. Vanessa, why not turn on to God? Mm. Okay, so I should repent. Start going to church, tie my hair, paying tight. I got that one next. Hmm? Christianity is not just all about that. The fact that many people have misunderstood what tithing in church is does not mean that it's all about Christianity. God is love. I honestly don't know how you've been able to keep me here telling me things I do not understand. But to be very frank with you, eh? I have a lot of things to do. Important ones are that. So I'm out of here. You died last week. What? I said you died last week. How did you know? Nothing is hidden from the one who sent me. I don't know how you know all of this. I, I don't have an idea. I don't even care. I don't even want to know how you managed to know us. But don't you ever, I'm warning you, don't you ever mention it again. Your salvation is an emergency. Vanessa is still willing to forgive you and take away your guilt. See, your God has mercy. You see these streets? They don't have mercy. And if I hear this from another person, I will look for you. I will look for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the Most High. These were not my words, but yours. So winning is a very spiritual act. It is written. No one comes to me unless the Father draws him. I see. That's why no matter the scriptures I use, the word of God, no matter how I use it, it does not make sense to those that hear 
It's as if it's wasted effort. No, 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 no. Don't say that. You are working for the kingdom. And the word of God says, it has never happened. And it will never happen. That the word of God will go out and fall on an empty soil. God will definitely reward you for your work. Amen. Remember how you, it was difficult to even win you over to Christ. I see. That's why my friends are blinded to the truth, no matter what I say. It's our duty to preach the gospel. I never knew it was this difficult to win a soul to Christ. <laughs> and why do you think the Bible says heaven rejoices over one soul that repents? So what were you actually praying for? And which God were you praying to? The God of heaven, Jehovah, or uh, Jesus. You're just wasting your own time. Let me quickly show you something. Do you have a Bible on your phone? No, I don't. Okay, you can use mine. Go to the book of Proverbs chapter number 28, you read verse 9. He that turned away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So have you seen for yourself? On what grounds were you calling on the name of the Lord? In whose spiritual calm were you living in that you would call on the help from heaven? So what was I supposed to do? There are people like us, we are not supposed to follow God again because we are sinners. <laughs> the answer to your question is written down in the Bible, in Isaiah chapter number 59. Isaiah 59, I'll give you to read verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So you see, your sins are the blanket that is blocking you and your God. That is the reason your prayers are not reaching heaven. 
So what we need to be discussing now is the way out. How do we now remove this blanket? Let's read this scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Read verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. For a sinner to pray, the first thing that sinner must do is that he or she must acknowledge the fact that he has sinned against God. After acknowledging the fact that you have sinned, you repent from your sin. Genuine repentance is what I'm talking about. Without acknowledgement, there cannot be repentance. After that, you confess the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. That's when you cannot exist in His camp and you have the full right to call on Him in prayers. The other time, we were right, you know. I got pregnant two weeks ago, then I was so troubled by the pregnancy that I didn't just know what to do. Then I bought some pills from my local pharmacy around my place. I locked myself in my room. I took the drugs. Just pain. I'm so curious when you told me about it because I did not tell anybody, I didn't expect anybody to know. I don't, I don't know who woke me up, I don't know how I got up. I only got up little about three hours. Three hours later, I just to see blood in my room. I've done a lot of bad things in secret. And I'm so ashamed of myself. Vanessa, God still loves you very passionately. That's why despite your deeds, he's still giving you a second chance to make things right with him. Can you please read this other scripture? John chapter 6, you read verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. That is Jesus talking there. No one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws him to Jesus. And if the Father draws you to Jesus, Jesus cannot cast you out. Vanessa, the Father has drawn you to Jesus. And under no means can Jesus cast you out. I think I would like to follow. Wow. That's nice. And give me a host. So my father. My father. I come before you today. I come before you today. I acknowledge the fact that I'm a sinner. I am knowledge the Father and the I pray over. I've made up my mind. I want to follow this Christ. Really? Yes. Oh my God. In fact, heaven rejoice over this right now. I'm so happy for you. Bro, come let me pray for you. Let's repeat this prayer after me. Say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come to you this day. I come to you this day. Accept me. Accept me. And have mercy on me. And have mercy on because me. I know I've sinned against you. Because I know I've sinned against you. In my words. In my words. In my thoughts. In my thoughts. In my actions. In my actions. Please have mercy. Please have mercy. And cleanse me with your precious blood. And cleanse me with your precious blood. Help me to grow in the knowledge of you. Help me to grow in the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let me pray with you right now, brother. Father Lord, I thank you this day for your son that has made this firm decision to follow you. 
and to serve you to accept you oh god as personal lord and savior i pray that you will help him to grow in the knowledge of you you will help him to grow O king of glory Because this relationship is Don't forget what No man don't ever take you for me. Now me. I dare you tell all the finish. Don't be you. Hear me? My year at this church again. Now me the king of the jungle. Mm -hmm. This Christian race is a race of continuous battle. Since you gave your life to Christ, from that day you declared war on the kingdom of darkness. So you have to keep fighting this war till the very end. I thought once you give your life to Christ, everything becomes easy, becomes peace and love. Narrow is the way, my sister. Our Lord and Savior admonishes us to carry our cross and follow Him. So let us not be deceived. My sister, let no man deceive you. Just like our brother said, indeed, narrow is the way. Can you please teach us how to pray? I don't know how to pray. Good question, my sister. Let's talk about prayer and what the Bible says about it. In summary, prayer is the name we give to the talk we do have with God. Why must we always pray? According to Luke chapter 18, verse 1. To ask for our needs. For God to forgive our sins. To surrender ourselves to God. In order for God to bring us justice. All our points are quite interesting. But the most reason we ought to always pray is to acknowledge God. Because our constant prayer is a proof to show that God is a loving God. He exists and He is a God of integrity. A God that can do whatever He says and he can even do more than what we think, as it is written in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 6. Father, he said, all things are possible with you. That was Jesus talking. Everything is possible for God, but what brings this possibility into our reality is a channel called prayers. Let me bring in a scenario. Just consider a child is driven from school because of textbook. And that child does not communicate the issue to the parents. Would that problem be solved? Is it that the parents cannot afford a textbook? Everything is possible for God. So we create our possibilities in this life through prayers. And He can even do more than what we think, as it is written in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How do you communicate to a God you don't even believe he exists? Having understood the importance and possibility of prayer, 
Can we follow our pattern? The pattern our Lord gave us in prayers as it is written in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 11. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 11. Let's open our Bibles. I read. After this manner, I And Father, which are in Leonard, I don't get it. What are you trying to say? What do you mean is over between us? What has come over you? I've given my life to Christ. And I realize all what we've been doing is not correct. Oh, spare yes. me that. Is it just all about Christ or you found someone else? Go straight to the point. The life we've been living is not correct. Jonas, please stop. No. Do you want to throw everything behind you just, just like that? I mean, Jonas, please don't do this. I beg you. I'm sorry, please. Jonas, I just, no, Jonas, please. Please, 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 please let go of me. Jonas. I'm sorry. Jonas. Look at my life. Look at my level. Look at my house. From this day onward, I denounce you. You demand for my money as if I owe you my life. I thought being with you would take away the pain, the frustration, but I discovered it's just for a while. And the next morning I get up in pain and in frustration. I come running after you like a dog. I can't continue with you any longer. And I hate you for wasting my time, making me poor and irresponsible. I think you should give your life to Christ so that you save many from the same pain. Today, I'm sending you out of my house, out of my life. It is over between us. Yeah, brother, I'm so excited. You not believe it. Yeah, I was saying that I, I gave an application, like I've been trying to apply for so many jobs in so many places, but this one at, at this bank, I gave it like some months ago, I can't really remember, but they, they just called me out of nowhere, they just called me like that, like the job is all mine. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, God has been great to me. Like, Oh my God, I just feel I have a lot of things to testify, honestly. Uh -huh. Like since I gave my life to Christ, a lot of good things have been happening to me. And the whole thing is just getting me excited. Yes. Ah, oh, amen, amen, oh, God is great. Yes. Okay, 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 brother. Okay, brother, there's more. You see, I love your passion for God. Thank you. But I noticed something today. While service was going on, you were on phone. You were on WhatsApp. My sister is not good. You see, God has given us a long time to do our daily activities. And just a Sunday to offer to Him in fellowship. Please. Try to be concentrated in church. Bible says, in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 62, he will put his hand on the plow and look back. It's not fit for the kingdom of God. My sister, you have started this race. Don't be deceived by the device of the devil. Are you done? Are you true? Your salvation is very important. So you want to tell me? Why do you know God? You are still small, my brother. I've gone to church, to church, to church. I know about the church. The Bible says, don't judge me, you're judging me. No, I'm not judging you, my sister. sister. What do you want to tell me? Excuse me, I have anything to do. Sister, listen. I don't, 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 I don't,
go. Have mercy on us. You called, I'm here. So have I done something wrong? It's not what you've done wrong. The right question in here is, what have I found right? I found the truth, and it's Christ. I think I want to follow him and us. Uh -huh. It's not guaranteed, so I think we should break up. Wait, what are you trying to tell me here? So where have the love we shared? What about the time we had? Where has it gone to? Oh, does your, your own Christianity teaches you on how to hurt people? Go about breaking people's hearts? Said you're doing what is right to always hurt some people. Wow. So what about hurting God? What about hurting him? I know this man of God nowadays. He'll come up, come up with one story saying he has a vision of you being his wife. My pastor is a man who fears God genuinely. <sighs> okay. He's a man of integrity. Don't let the stories of false prophets define what Christianity is. There are actually true men of God out there. Can I ask you this? Vanessa, do you actually love me? I love you so much as I want to see your soul safe. You know what? This is not any now. Not even so soon. Until I say so. Because I'm not letting go of you. See you another time. God. I thought this was going to be easy. Our what we've been doing is not correct. I've made up my mind. I want to follow this Christ. God, please help me. I don't want this. Hello? 
Tell me dread, please. It was just a mistake. Okay? Yeah, no, 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 no. There's nothing to bother about. Ah. And please don't call my number again. Thank you. What did you make me do? <laughs> my goodness, what are you talking about? Did I rape you? Please leave my house. Why did you call me in the first place? I think I told you I don't want to do this again. Leave my house. <laughs> After having sex with me, you are sending me away just like that. Is that what your God is teaching you to do? Using and dumping girls. It's serious. You are an agent of darkness. And you just had sex with an agent of darkness. Out. And I know you enjoy it. So wait for your reward in nine months time. Me be mad dog for the boy. Man, we know the fear me, you know the fear die. I hear so now you take my girlfriend, you know the fear face. I don't go to prison five times. I know the fear nothing. If I come back again for you, I'll kill you. Kill me? I'm not afraid of you. I'm only afraid of God. If you want to live long, send Vanessa back. I pity you. You are dead already. You say mad dog will die. Give your life to Jesus so that he can give you life in abundance. If I come back for you next time, I will kill you. to print out the flowers. Okay, now that we have the money, I believe we can do it in two days' time. Mm, the problem now is where can we do it? I know somebody that can do it. Okay. Then we'll have to go for that person. There's something I really want to, want to share with you. Okay. Bro, so, there's this button in my heart. If I think I need to excuse you guys. And the only person that have not contributed is Sister Vanessa. So I will need to see her. Okay. Excuse me. Thank you. 
it has really been eating me up. I really believe if I share it with you, you're going to help me out. Okay. Midred came yesterday. And... And we had sex. After the incident, I was unable to pray. Even to read the Bible, I could not. It is, in fact, I'm dying inside. The thing is killing me. The reason you could not pray is because sin had created a barrier between you and God. You see, whenever you sin, guilt and fear now set in. But my brother, I have good news for you. Christ came to redeem the lost. This Christian race is not a decision. It is a lifestyle. My greatest fear now is, what if she's pregnant? My spirit tells me she's not pregnant. Don't be afraid. My brother, I would really like you to read First uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither be impure and immoral. No idolaters, nor adulterers, nor those who participate in homosexuality, nor cheats, thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor robbers will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. God is still willing to forgive you. If only you can repent of that sin genuinely. Thank you very much, my brother. You're welcome. I really want to repent from this. I don't want to do it again. Then you have to pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Sister Vanessa? Yes. Ah, do you know of any mad dog or what was the name he called? Mad dog? Yes, yes, I know him. Yes, he? He's my ex-boyfriend. Hmm, your ex-boyfriend. He came here. Yes. What? Yes. He came here. He came here. Ah. Now that's that guy is very dangerous. Yes, I could see it. He grew up in Mutengene. Drops people without putting on marks on his face, and then he goes scot free. It makes me tremble when you say he came here because killing, killing a human being to come here. He actually slapped me, and he did. Yes, he slapped me, and when they were about leaving, he told me he's coming back for me, and the next time he will kill me. When that guy says he's coming back. You should know that he will come back. Trust me, he will. If you say he's coming back, then I don't have a problem with it. Who can battle with Jehovah? When he comes, our God will fight for us. But just be careful. I know what I mean. He will come back. By the way, you have not given your contribution. Where do you think you are going to with all these bags? To stay here with you, of course. You got me pregnant, so who do you want to be taking care of me and your unborn baby? Got you pregnant, you see. You had sex yesterday and today you are coming with a cage that I got you pregnant. <laughs> Let me tell you, you are by no means pregnant. What if I am? You are not. <laughs> yesterday was a mistake. I'm not going to by any chance let that same mistake repeat itself again. You better change your ways. If not, destruction awaits you. 
What are you trying to say? I don't get it. What are you saying? It is written when they speak great words of swollen emptiness by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they tempt those that just escape the sinful life. And I see that in every aspect of you. <laughs> ah. The wages of sin is dead. You better change your ways. Church, blah, 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 blah. You know what? You're just crazy. Yes, you are crazy. I'm living. And if by any means I'm pregnant, I'm coming back to you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Another spirit was in this place. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Can we go inside? No, we can't go inside. We can't enter my house again. Okay, join me. No, you are supposed to go back by now. Do you think doing this is right? I'm being, I'm hot here. Look into my and tell me you no longer love me. Babe, it doesn't make you well. It Come doesn't on. make you right. Even if I. No, enjoy it does not make anything right. Am I not a good guy? You are. Have I not been nice to you? You are nice. Was it not fun? Let me see. What I'm seeing, no matter how the whole thing is, I still it still doesn't Come on, feel no. right. You shouldn't say so. Something that has been disturbing me for a while now. What's that? Cedric came to my, I mean my, my ex boyfriend. He came to my house the other day. I, I, don't know, I just had this urge, this, this desire for him. I, I had this urge to kiss him. I, I don't know where it came from. So at the end of the day, I, I, I kissed him. And after that incident, I cannot be myself. I cannot pray. I just cannot pray. It's even not going. I feel so empty. I, I don't know. Listen, Sister Vanessa. Let me tell you something about me. Before I gave my life to Christ, I've been gay. Yeah. As an homosexual. And I had this burning desire for men. I never stopped fooling women too. It was a terrible experience. But you see, when I gave my life to Christ, this man never stopped coming after me. And it was like I I had this, I kept attracting more women instead. But I fought back. Because it was becoming a lifestyle. I fought back so hard. That's what the Bible says. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So, 
I think I will. I would like to be transformed so that I will come on this sister. Um, it's good, it's good. You, it's very, very important to be transformed. You see, a transformed believer is the one who has crucified the flesh to the cross. And the, the, the spirit of loss has no place in him anymore. So you need transformation. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your daughter. Thank you for this one who has openly confessed. The Bible says, confess your sins to one another. So I welcome you all, my brothers and sisters, to another session of our youth meeting. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. But before we start our activities, I see a new face among us. Please, can someone just stand and quickly introduce her to us? Okay, thank you. Um, sir, this is Sister Sonita, our new convert. She gave her life to Christ yesterday. Sister Sonita, you get to meet our youth president, Brother Desmond, and I'm the youth treasurer, and here is Brother Boris, our assistant youth president. And you get to meet Sister Vanessa, Brother Leonard, and the rest of them. In fact, this is not all about us, but as the days go by, you learn to know about us. Sister Sonita, you are welcome to the youth department. And as she said, this is Love Assembly of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bumaka. Love is who we are. Enjoy your stay while with us. Thank you. Pressy, this is the was my best night ever. I slept in peace like a baby. Me too. I slept like a baby. So do you people know where that peace came from? I think is because I took the right decision. Because I finally sent Midred out of my life. My brother, our Lord and personal Savior Jesus Christ told us that peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And remember, peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, Sister, I think we need to look at your lesson. Please, if you go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. I also want the women to be modest and sensible about their clothes and to dress properly, not with fancy hairstyles or with gold ornaments or pear or expensive dresses. Our looks should represent the Christ we stand for. Even you, Brother Leonard, your hairstyle is not appropriate. Like seriously? But what's wrong with my hairstyle? Open your Bible to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27 and 28. Do not cut the head at the side of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. I am the Lord. My own version says, You shall not run the corners of the hair of your head, nor trim the corners of your beard as some idolaters do. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print or tattoo any marks upon you. I am the Lord. This is God talking. It is a command that God has given us. If Bible says we should not do this, the fact that people of this world are doing it doesn't make it right unto God. So let us go back to what the Bible is telling us and forget about all this fashion. Another scripture when it concerns our dressing that we should always keep at the back of our mind is Deuteronomy chapter number 22, verse 5. Men wear what pertain to men and women do say. Are we together? Let us live an exemplary life as believers. And as for you ladies, Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7, that we women should tie their hands in the place of worship. You ought to tie your hair. It should not only be during Sunday service. When you are coming even for our meetings, I expect all of you to tie your hair. Are we together? So I expect that from next meeting, none of you should come with your hair loose. Like I said, let us follow what the Bible says and not the standards of this world.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. My name is Brother Peter. I came for this meeting. I was invited to come and attend this youth meeting. So I came to 99 years for the chief. One day for the honor and today in Aradi. Vanessa, pass Mogu. Nobody is going with you. And by the way, you are not supposed to be here. You know about my dog. You want my inform you. I don't need to find out about him because I already know about his master today. You say I'm Satan. Pass more home and no talk with you. I'm not going with you. I already told you that it's over between us. You say, give me that the truth. in front of the sanctuary of Jehovah. When we pray, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw in the spirit an angel of God with the sword of Joshua. And then I knew that Joshua had been released for someone from heaven. That angel you saw was Michael the archangel. He swam among the seven that stand in front of the Lord. But how come I didn't see him? I didn't, I didn't feel him. I love to see angels. There is power in the word of God. Each time we pray and we mix it with our faith, be rest assured that there is a throne in heaven that backs you up. And whatever you say, God makes sure those things come to pass. Amen. He will never allow you to be put to shame. Amen. Amen. I love God. I love God. He has called you out from every tongue, every nation, every tribe. He has sent us on a mission. As believers, we must carry that mission with us. And that mission is to win souls for him. Before we go out, there are certain things we need to watch out for. Let us hear the voice. Let us open the Bible so that we go. Yeah. Second Timothy chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Somebody can read for us. I read. Remember that there will be difficult times in the last days. People will be selfish, greedy, boastful, and conceited. They will be insulting, disobedient to their own parents, ungrateful and irreligious. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have seen from the scriptures, self-love, self-crush, 
Those are the patterns of the world now. And the devil is the one usually sponsoring all these things. People becoming lovers of themselves. They forget what the word of God says concerning them. My brothers and sisters, I want us not to be conformed to the patterns of this world. But let our life be in accordance with the word of God. And do not forget, Christ has promised us that he will always be with us. No matter what we go through. As we are going out today, do not be distracted. By the way, the pastor said he's coming to have a word with us. Oh, the pastor is in here. God bless every one of you. I am glad to see all of you. As you all know, I was on this my retreat. And I want to appreciate God for what he has done. Our Lord has given us victory. I could not concentrate. Because of the things the Lord opened my eyes to see that is happening back here. The Lord will bless you. Amen. I would like you to help me read this scripture, which the Lord gave to me. Revelation chapter 12. You help me read from verse 10. Then I heard a voice, a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and power and the darkness, dominion reign of our God and the authority of his Christ has come. For the, for the accuser of our believing brothers, the brethren and sisters that has been thrown down at last, he who accuses them and keep bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. I got it. Beloved, the accuser of the brethren has fallen. Amen. Because the next verse says, For they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The Lord has seen your work. Amen. Brother Desmond, the Lord has seen this work you are doing. Amen. How you are depopulating hell to populate heaven. The Lord has laid in my heart to bless you. Please come. Please, I would like you to stand and step your hand towards our brother. My father, my God, I want to thank you for this, my son, this, for that which you have used him to do as you have empowered him to depopulate hell and populate heaven. Lord, from my heart, I decree he is blessed. And I'm not here to go and do this work. Do exploit for the Lord. And God, I pray, with signs follow him, back him up. Back every one of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. My son, it's your time to shine. Amen. Go and shine. For the Lord has called you to do exploit for him. Praise God. I heard you guys have evangelism. Yes, yes. You can be going for your evangelism. I have some work to do in the office. So, let me just catch up with what I have to do. God bless you. The Lord will back you up. Amen. Brethren, we are going out for the evangelism now. And I would really love that we go in pairs. So, Sister Vanessa, you will go with Brother Leonard. Brother Boris, you will go with Sister Quinta. Why Brother Peter and Sister Peshambe will go out to the So love me the word that he gave us this song. Oh, here there is life and atonement for sin. And opens the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord.